January in Pennsylvania started out just like every other year, cold and snowy. And this was what I was craving. Warm weather, beaches, water, surf, but more than anything, I was missing life with my children. Mike and I both were. So by the end of February, I put in my transfer papers to transfer to Tampa International Airport in Florida and was ready to leave Harrisburg International Airport behind. If you've been with me for a while, you know I was a federal officer with the Department of Homeland Security working for the Transportation Security Administration. My transfer was approved very quickly and I had a start date in Tampa of April. So between February and the middle of April, it was time to start unloading all of our possessions and preparing to move. I started taking things down off the walls, packing boxes, and we started saying goodbye to some of our closest friends that we have had for years. And time to say goodbye to Harrisburg International Airport. Moving day, here we are. Two days later, in Tampa. Finally, I'm with my grand dog, isn't she dear? My cute little chihuahua granddaughter. And we're happy and relaxed and content, spending time with our kids. And of course, we're visiting places that are familiar to us and doing things like we love like spending time on the beach, hanging out at some of the touristy areas that we always enjoyed. I settled in at my new position at Tampa International pretty quickly. And of course, the Florida wildlife never ceases to amaze us. to being rebels, seeing Kid Rock in concert again, and living life just like normal. Like a moron, I started eating junk food a little more than what I should have. And of course, there were always Florida storms to contend with. Ah, but the rainbow after the storm. Work at the airport was starting to take its toll on me. I was becoming more frazzled by the day and eating more junk by the day. Halloween Horror Nights Universal gave me some welcome time away from the job that I really needed, but I knew I had some decisions to make soon. Caitlin decided on a wedding dress, so those projects are moving along quite well. And Christmas is coming. Christmas has already came. Christmas is gone. And oh, the cookies. And I've eaten way too many cookies.
So hi, it is December 30th and um, 2022 is coming to a close. So as you can see, it has been a super exciting year for Mike and I and the whole family. It had some challenges and issues along the way as any year is going to, but we made it out alive. And we're ready to start 2023 with all new goals, all new hopes and dreams, and hopefully a whole new attitude. So to recap 2022, you saw the montage, kind of a synopsis of how our year started and where it's ended up. But I did take some time to write down um, different things that happened to us in 2022, both good and bad, as well as our goals, my goals for 2023. So obviously the big thing was we moved to Florida, left our homes that we grew up in and the area that we grew up in, which was York, Pennsylvania. And we are currently residing in Tampa, Florida. Along with that, we also sold a lot of our possessions. Some people would look at this as a bad thing. Um, we don't, we look at, at it as a positive. The possessions that we decided to sell before we made the big move were items that we knew we wouldn't need down here, like um, snow shovels, heavy parkas, things like that. Or it was just items that we weren't using regularly. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been back and forth with the uh, minimalist lifestyle, not to an extreme, but having that mindset of, I apologize for the noise, we have our patio doors open tonight because it's like 79 degrees here today, December 30th, so I'm enjoying the fresh air, so I apologize for the noise. Um, what was I saying? Oh, minimalist. Um, freeing up space in your home also frees up clutter in your mind when you start unloading things that you are not using. I am a firm believer in that if you don't use the item and if it doesn't hold extreme sentimental value, why is it in your life? So the selling of our unused possessions, again, was a good thing for us and I don't consider that a negative. When we left in April to make the move down here, I was the healthiest I had ever been in my entire adult life. Um, and if you've been with me for a while, you know my health issues that I have had through the years, um, multiple surgeries, some of them life-saving. And I was extremely disciplined for the end of 2021 into the first half of 2022. In the gym regularly, really watching what I was eating. And again, I was healthier than what I've ever been since I've been an adult. So again, huge positive. So we moved down here. We are living with family again. We are residing with my oldest daughter and her fiance, Ryan and Caitlin. Um, yeah, working out just great for us. We're splitting our, splitting our expenses 50-50 here in the house. Um, we have scattered work schedules, so we're not on top of each other. And again, it's working out quite well. It also helps out with the dog because we do have a little chihuahua in our life again. And um, it helps with her so that she's not home alone so much. So again, all positive. I'm gonna keep looking at my notes, sorry. So we moved down here and it's almost like we moved somewhere that's considered a vacation destination for many people in the world. So I went through this the first time we moved down here. You move to an area that is a vacation destination and you start living like you were on vacation. So I started eating the junk food here and there, um, 
losing some of that discipline that I had had. I also didn't join a gym right away when we moved down here, so I wasn't getting my daily fitness in that I was in Pennsylvania. Well, you can't eat the junk if you're not gonna exercise to work it off. So I have gained quite a bit of weight back since I've been down here. We arrived mid-April, this is the end of December. That's eight months of, again, I didn't completely fall off the wagon with the food, um, but enough cheating has happened. And again, the lack of regular workouts that the scale is showing that. So big negative, big negative. Um, another thing that has happened this year is that obviously we left all of our friends and family behind. And I have noticed that some of the people that I was so close to up there as far as friendships, um, those friendships have kind of started to fizzle, which I guess that's natural, normal, um, when you're living this far away and you can't do things together anymore. Also with a work schedule that is a little bit, a lot different for most people, it's hard to keep in contact. So. We have had to deal with that emotionally as well, losing some, losing some friends, not losing them, but not having that closeness that we used to have for decades. So you saw in the beginning that we have just been enjoying finally being able to spend time with the kids, having our holidays together doing activities together, going places together, just hanging out at the house together. It has been absolutely wonderful. But what has not been wonderful is my job. So being a TSA officer, <laughs> it, has its, uh, it has its stressful times. And where I worked, was a relatively small airport in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Not big at all. So I get down here to a big city airport and this is a totally different animal down here. Totally different. The passengers that I am having to deal with down here are, I hate to say this, but I am seeing the worst of humanity down here. Um, the people that come down here to visit from all over the United States, the, the, um, just the lack of respect for my position, these people that are just hateful, um, mean, the job was starting to take its toll on me, uh, mentally, the schedule was taking its toll on me. And it was causing some health problems. And I had shared that in a previous video. I knew I had to do something pretty drastic. So what I did is I gave myself a goal. I told myself December 17th was going to be it for me. I was going to quit work. Um, and I did. I have left TSA. And I'm currently unemployed, looking for work, mind you. I can't stay unemployed. I need to work financially, mentally, I need to work. Um, so yes, actively seeking employment, um, but I left my position as an officer effective December 17th. So that brings you up to date on 2022 ending the year of 2022. So I started thinking about, you know, what I wanna see happen in my life personally in 2023. So obviously number one is a new job. I know kind of what I'm looking for. Um, I started putting resumes out there. I actually got a phone call today from one of the places that I really would like to work 
and he played phone tag and now they're gone for the holiday weekend, not opening again until Tuesday. So I will keep you filled in on the new job progress, but that's gonna be number one. Number one thing that I need to accomplish, that I need to accomplish ASAP is going to be getting a new job. Um, I would prefer full-time. I'll take part-time just to get my foot in the door if it's someplace I really, really wanna work. Um, but again, I will keep you posted on that. Um, Another thing that I want to do, that I want to accomplish in 2023 is we have some minor debt here and there with like credit cards and I'm just about done paying off the car. One more payment on that and that'll be done. Um, so I just want to make sure that we become debt free and stay debt free. Um, obviously we're not going to be living with the kids forever. And that's something that Mike and I will plan eventually when it comes to that time that we do split up from living with the kids. But right now that's not a priority. So making sure that we have our finances in order is gonna be a big goal for us for 2023. Big one for me personally is getting this body back into shape. So I have gone and joined the gym again so that that has started. So I'm back to working out and the Christmas cookies have been thrown in the garbage. <laughs> Thank God the holidays are over. Ugh. So the junk food has come to a stop. I'm back to watching what I eat and the gym will be a big part of my life again. So I need to get this body back to the way it used to be before I keep getting older and it becomes harder to do. So we have a big wedding coming up this year in September. Caitlin's getting married. And um, there's a lot of planning that goes into a big wedding. So a goal is to make sure that we stay on track as far as timing goes to make sure we have everything booked, paid for, so that this wedding goes off smooth with as few glitches as possible because <laughs> it's a big undertaking we have a lot of family and friends coming down from pennsylvania um so it's not just a local wedding we have a lot of out of towners that we're going to have to make sure they have a place to stay um transportation entertain them while they're here things like that so now this next thing that i have written down is really going to throw everybody for a loop this is way out of left field. But I would like to buy a minivan. Not because I want to drive a minivan, mind you. I always swore I would never, ever own a minivan. I'm not a soccer mom, never have been a soccer mom. Hate minivans, think they're ugly. Just hate them. However, it's six of us here. And whenever we want to do something as a family and we have to drive, we have to take two cars. Um, on Monday, New Year's, no. On Monday, the day after New Year's, we all have plans to go to Sarasota to um, a farmer's type market store. Um, anyway. Um, we have to take two cars because they, we, none of us own a vehicle that will carry six of us. Also, um, like if Mike needs wood, lumber, anything like that, fortunately so far he hasn't needed any pieces that he had to keep whole, but on the times that we have needed lumber, he has to take a saw with him and cut it to put it in the back of his vehicle. But the minivan... They're a little bigger. So will that go happen? I don't know. But that is something that we are really considering is um, buying a minivan. Go figure. I swore I, I'd never say that. <sighs> and lastly, my goal for 2023 is something that I've already, that I'm already doing, but it's something I want to keep doing. And that is continuing with my daily devotions, and my gratitude journal. Starting my day with my morning devotions to set my tone for the day and ending my day 
with the gratitude journal journal to keep that positive attitude as I'm preparing to go to sleep. Recapping, you know, what happened through my day, what I'm thankful for, writing it down. And again, just setting the tone for bed. Starting the day with a good tone, ending the day with a good tone. So that's kind of it. So I'm going to end this video here. I apologize that I've been a little absent, but I did take some time to just make the decisions about work, enjoy the holidays, and did some planning. So let's start this new year off on a very positive note. And I encourage all of you to sit and do what I just did. Think about this last year and all that it entailed and um, major things that happened in your life. And then whether they're good or bad. And then decide, okay, next year, this is what I'm gonna focus on. I don't really consider like my goals for 2023 as New Year's resolutions. Resolutions are not a bad thing, but you know how they are. Most of the time they're not kept. So anyway, that's where I'm gonna end the video. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you in the new year. Bye.